Welcome, uh, ladies and gentle thems, to the Tito Bonito Show. Tonight, we have very special guests, producer, performer, and overall badass, Miss Donna Hood, and boyless superstar of epic proportions, Mr. Gorgeous. And now, give it up for your host, the Cuban Missile Crisis of Burlesque. Tito Bonito! Yay! All right, y'all. This is where you literally clap your hands virtually. Uh, (laughs) Because I can't see you. What's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Tito Bonito Show. We are episode three up in this mother. And we are going to have a good old time today because I have some very inspirational performers in this show tonight not only to the world but also very dear to my life and my career so i'm very excited to have them not only can i call them friends but definitely definitely uh inspirations how y'all doing today you know how it works i can't hear you if you like anything that's going on in the show today exactly you're gonna pump some little hearts on the side there if the younger you are the faster your thumb will hit those and make it all beautiful and heart-shaped and rainbow-like. Uh, exactly, just like that, just like that. Also, if you have any questions, you as the audience, you are completely immersive in this experience. So feel free to ask some questions. There is a question mark box right there. So if you have any questions for me or for any of our special guests this evening, then make sure you put those in there. And if we can get to them, we will definitely get to them. Uh, So far, catching up from last week, if you didn't see last week, we had some amazing performers. Uh, We had the incredible songwriter and uh, former burlesque star, Frankie. uh, Frankie. (laughs) Yeah, that's her name, Frankie Duop. And then we also have Blake McIver. Today we have Donna Hood, who is the producer and curator of one of the top Los Angeles burlesque shows. And one of the biggest shows in the country, we also have one of my boy less inspirations, Mr. Gorgeous. Uh, but since this past week, you know, it's been some uh, cute times. This past week, we're all going through some shit. So I know it's not really uh, a place to brag about my productivity, but uh, I've been in kind of a little bit of a slump. So it's been nice to get out of that. And recently, I challenge myself to bring back my old web series cuban missile series that was on youtube and even though i wasn't the best it actually did get me a lot of recognition and it helped me to grow not only as a performer but also as an editor and uh i was very excited so i'm bringing it back exclusively on my only fans for four episodes and we just released the very we i like how i always say we like it's not my ass doing all of this shit but uh, I just released the first episode. It is all about the last Pansy Craze Peep show that we did where I was in full Dina Cochina drag. And uh, it's cute. It's five minutes long, not too long. Five minutes, just like the $5 it costs you to subscribe to the OnlyFans. Uh, next week, though, is going to be all about the premiere of the uh, Boy Less show. The all-male burlesque review that uh, I used to produce at Redline, Redline at Faultline. And uh, the next episode, you'll just have to join and see. But every Thursday morning, you're going to be able to watch a whole brand new episode to see what kind of shows I used to be getting into before this whole he who shall not be named shit happened to us. Um, Also, shout out to the female artists that are duetting right now. We got some Megan Thee Stallion with Beyonce. We got Nicki Minaj and fucking Doja Cat, which I hear she might be problematic and might like insults. So we're gonna have to do more research on that before I try to say all of that shit to people. Like, I don't know what I'm talking about. But also, if you have not seen the new Lady Gaga Rain On Me featuring Ariana Grande, where Ariana Grande finally loses her fucking ponytail, whoo, you ain't living, baby. Go watch that music video. Shout out to the women who are collaborating. I wanna see some TLC and Spice Girls, all right? I almost got them, uh, I got an article written just off of a tweet mentioning that one. So let's see TLC and Spice Girls on tour, can we? Also, y'all, if you didn't know, a lot of people, I shaved my head. Uh, it grew back. I shaved it during the beginning of quarantine. Uh, so I'm back. I'm back in action. And I'm ready to get back on TikTok because I don't look like a crazy Uncle Fester hybrid. So I'm doing the TikTok challenge, TikTok Tito challenge, where I'm going to ask y'all, 
to tell me what the fuck to create because I don't know how to create so much damn shit. So if you have an idea for a TikTok or you want to see me recreate a TikTok that's already there because that's kind of how it works, uh, send me some ideas. Send me some ideas. And I promise you I will absolutely do that shit because I'm a clown and I'm home alone not doing a damn fucking thing. Uh, what else? What else do I want to talk to you about? Oh, you know what I keep wanting to do with y'all and I never get the chance to do it. So we're going to try it right now. <sighs> Here we go, y'all. You know which one I want. No whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Croquetas. Uh, well, you know what? I had to try that. All right, y'all. <laughs> Here we go. I am very excited to bring on my first guest this evening. She is uh, a dear friend of mine, but she is also an incredible performer and a phenomenal producer. So without any further ado, I'm going to bring to the screens at home the incredible Miss Donna. Ooh, look at my Donna. Hi. Hi. Look at me trying to get everything correct. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing all right. Look, I'm trying to do everything right now. So you get... I know. I'm. Uh, it seems the volume seems very low. Oh, there we go. Is my volume better now? No, no. Now it's up. There we are. <laughs> you... Uh, look, I actually made this whole thing for you. And then now I don't know where it went. I made a little title card for you. Here we go. There you go. There you go. Oh, and it gets oh, cropped out. that's cute. <laughs> and then it gets Yay! cropped out. Because I'm a professional. I love it. I like the intro. I, the intro with all of the videos is really cute. You tr look, trying, girl. Try Ying. How are you? <laughs> you look You look so superb. Every time I see you, you look more immaculate than... I showered today. <laughs> <laughs> is that all it takes? Is I'm that trying, all it takes? I'm trying to hold it together. You know, I haven't had a haircut in like three months, so even just this was a, a challenge. <laughs> I'm interested because, you know, I've been cutting my own hair since for like 12 years. Maybe I should stop doing that. But right now, I definitely love that it is uh, something Your that I don't have to. Your hair is growing back. I did notice that. Because I, I look lucky enough to see it when you were basically bald. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I will never have another opportunity to shave my head. I wanted to try it because it's not like I had to do a show. And I had a ton of acts with hats on. I understand. <laughs> this is the perfect time to try things. It is. I love that. Donna at one point was like, uh, it's going to grow back, it's right? Okay. No, I'm kidding. It grows back. You're lucky. <laughs> no, my family was kind of worried about it growing back. And then that made me go, wait, will it grow back? No, yeah, it'll grow back. It'll grow back. Yeah, it's going to grow back. Um, welcome to the show. I love you Yay! so much. As anyone that knows anything about our relationship knows that I, you run one of the, if not, in my opinion, this is a disclaimer for the whole yeah, audience. Like, in my humble opinion. <laughs> In my humble opinion, whether I was in the show or not, uh, you run the largest and most epic burlesque show in Los Angeles, in California, for sure. I would like to say the country. <laughs> Very say lucky to have you there. <laughs> uh, but before I even showed up to the gig, uh, you are a very inspiring story because not only did you come from a dance background and not even a part of the burlesque scene in the beginning. But not only did you start a show in Los Angeles, which is super hard, but now we are going to be running in November. It's going to be seven years for you. Yeah. And wow. you want to... Like, that's even hard to even think about, like, that it's been that long. And not only that, it's because it's one thing to have a show for that long, but it's another thing to have a show that is consistently growing. It's always challenging itself. And I, I mean, I emphasize the word growing because it is every month it's not only from the venue the first venue i was at okay so let's back yeah because that's about yeah because it was there was one before your time <laughs> there was a lot of time before me so do you want to tell the audience about how you got started and how you moved to los angeles because originally you're from texas so just tell everybody catch them up a little bit yeah so uh to make a long story short even though it's still probably going to seem long um i auditioned with a group of friends for america's best dance crew for season two and uh we actually did make it got onto the show and when we did the finale and filmed it everybody was like you should strike while the iron is hot move to la and doing something like that coming from a small town in texas seemed impossible but once that one thing happened i went back um, after the show filmed, I got three jobs. I was teaching 
at a children's gymnastics gym teaching dance all day. Um, I was, you know, working in a bar at night, like cocktailing, doing whatever I could to save up a bunch of money, found a roommate, moved to LA, um, and then just got a dance agent, you know, and I, and I did it the way you're not supposed to do it. They say you're supposed to mail everything in, but I was very determined. And so I went and rang the doorbell at the agency that I wanted to be at. They're like, you do realize that you cannot do this. <laughs> like, and I was like, I'm really sorry, but I just, I really wanted to make sure you got my, my application and everything. And it turns out they called me the next day, brought me in, signed me. Um, and then shortly after that, um, I got a phone call from the agent asking if I would like to um, submit to perform with Dita Von Tees. Funny thing is, is I had only just learned of Dita maybe three months prior to that. Wow. I, I, I was at uh, Barnes and Noble and I saw one of her um, books there. And I was like, wow, because I mean, coming from dance, I always loved sparkly costumes and everything. So I could relate. So I was like, Ooh, I really oh, yeah, like I this is amazing. So turns out I submitted, ended up getting the call, went to go meet Dita and her team. They did like a one on one personal interview. Um, and then that's kind of how I knew of burlesque, but burlesque was just starting to get some traction in 2010 with the things here and there. But, you know, it was crazy to go, wow, I get to work with, you know, Dita Von Tees. That's amazing. So I got to be in the dressing room with Dirty Martini and Catherine Delish and everybody. And I didn't, and at the time, it didn't, you don't really maybe focus. it wasn't even registering, like, how incredibly special that really was. And, I, of course, I took it all in. But yeah. um, it was great to just be around them and learn from them and all of that. And then uh, shortly after that, I had another dance job that pulled me off the tour. Um, and then once I wasn't around it, I missed it. And I, I didn't know how much it really meant to me until it was gone, which <laughs> you don't know what you have until it's gone. <laughs> Come on, Joni Mitchell never so, lies. Uh, I think after that, I started realizing that LA had a lot of different burlesque opportunities to, to grow. Like the, the Houston brothers had, you know, No Vacancy and Poor Vu and, uh, you know, um, Harvard and Stone. So I thought, you know, maybe I'll give it a go and try my whole solo burlesque thing. And so Come. I, you know. <laughs> I am so grateful so for I, that. I, Let I, me just I really, say. I, I, I found music that registered with me. I, I even used, I think. <laughs> it's so funny that one of the dresses that I used for the very first time was actually my prom dress. <laughs> Listen, so, in the so, beginning, that's, like, that's the amazing part about burlesque. Yeah. Strip right out of this thing. <laughs> Listen, there is nothing sexier than that. Tell me something sexier than getting yeah, out of some so shit that I, you wore uh, when you're coming. So that's kind of how I got started. And then um, the more I did it, the more I wanted to do it more. And doing yeah. it one time a week wasn't enough. And uh, I just, thought, man, wouldn't it be fun to just, you know, round up some friends and do it. And honestly, I, I just thought those things in my mind, but I never actually put them into motion. Right. Um, I took a solo video of me performing and I emailed it out to a bunch of different people, just anybody who was going to listen to me. And I was just like, Hey, if you need a burlesque performer for an event, would love to do it. And, uh, this one guy hit me back one. <laughs> And he's hey. like, can you please come into my venue? I would love for you to take a look at it and talk to you about future shows. So I go in and he's showing me um, this venue. And at the time it was called First and Hope, but now it is called A Lock, which is a upscale vegan restaurant. So in the back was this little smoky room that fits about 60 people, but we definitely went past that number. But <laughs> was it back <laughs> then? Was it also there? But when I walked in there, he was talking to me about ticket sales and shows and all this stuff. And I was like, um, well, you know, like if you have like a New Year's Eve party and you need like a performer, like I would love to do it. And he's like, oh, no, 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 no. Like, I would love to have a, you run a show here. And I was like, I think I even remember saying to him, I was like, I don't know what, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> And then he was like, you must have friends that do the same thing that you do. And you're like, yeah, and I was I like, do. I actually do. <laughs> and he's like, so, you know, I'll give you three months. He's like, round up a crew, get your website up, sell the tickets, and I'll see you on November 1st. <laughs> I love how he says it nonchalant. I got in my car and shut the door and sat there in silence for a second. And I called my girlfriend and I was like, I 
have no idea what I just got myself into. <laughs> but it was cool. So it was a it was a challenge, and it you know I I rose I rose to the occasion and uh, got everything together. And, Tenfold. Uh, and then I guess the rest is history. But yeah, it started at. First in Hope, and then it moved to the Globe, and then it moved to Exchange LA, and then from there we have teamed up with Exchange LA plus the Palace Theater. So it has continuously gotten bigger and better, and but I have a lot of you guys to thank for that because I feel like everybody on the T's team is inspired by each other. There's no competition. It's all just very good, healthy inspirational type energy so I feel like when you see one person doing really really well it's like everybody wants to keep doing that so yeah. I feel like that's been the really great thing that it's, it's definitely not about one person it's about an entire collection of people that consistently want to be better and but wants to keep raising the bar at the same time though even though that is very true I think something that may not ever be in your vocabulary is to show light on how much of that is your doing how much uh i've seen productions run where mishaps happen all the time and they're always treated really like like i would never have guessed this was gonna happen oh my god and they just freak out and lose it and it's just a part of like every single form of theater like there's always production like that and there's always this like even if there is this like divide between the venue and the production, you've always immaculately, you make sure to not only contain the stress to yourself, but you always find an answer to something. You never are, even though this is your baby, and like, I don't think in the last five years I've ever written it, tease if you please, without putting Donna Hood before it, but you don't do that. I I started out doing it and there was something I don't even remember it, it stopped pretty quick but it was just once I got there I just realized that it I didn't need it there like and in that I wanted I guess it's a the, the, the vision I had for it was being more of a team and like a right. collection like a you know and not about one person of course people are going to figure out if they start digging and looking around which it really doesn't take very long to figure it out who's True. who's running it but I feel like I didn't want to take too, too much credit, I guess. I don't even know how I want to say that. But I, but I just think that it was more about the team for me. And I just thought that I'll take my name off there because if somebody wants to know who runs the show, they're going to look it up. So I didn't need to broadcast my name above the name. Because I feel like Tease If You Please is such a big brand now that um, it didn't need my name ahead of it. I but think if somebody it, wants to put it, I'm not going to argue it. But, I like, you know, I like putting I it on do. because I like putting it on because I do. And especially I've just seen with some productions where, especially me as the host and performer, people think that I'm producing shit. And it's like, no, 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 honey. Not only am I not producing shit, which at the basic level of it is just hiring performers who already have and curated their own acts. Right. You not only are making sure that every show is curated in a way where it's like, thoughtful and different but it's also like just even the last six year anniversary where you choreographed pretty much everyone's fucking routine costumed it like there's so much more intricacies to the way that you produce shows versus how other people produce shows where yes it's still a collective but i do like expressing to people how much of it is your doing yeah and i think that th that show in particular was kind of a a moment for me because it, it is a big moment it's a big anniversary show six years that's great but I think that I finally got to a point where I was like the show has grown it's in these beautiful spaces that I've always wished it was going to be in and I really think that what's you know separates me from anyone else like I think that that's the one thing about being a burlesque performer is you have to find what is special about you and make yourself like that's what makes you stand out and makes you special and makes people want to fall in love with you and I think that my strong point has always been my dance background and yep. you definitely do not need one in order to be a successful burlesque performer but for me that is one of my tools in my tool belt and uh, I decided that I, you guys have given so much to me by doing the show. So I wanted to give back to you. So I, I did. I worked my ass off on the show. I, don't so think I wanted to make sure I put in all the extra money I could, like, and then all the extra time to choreograph these special routines. And I thought that that show 
that's like the crown jewel. So I, I, I'm, I'm excited. Oh God. And so hopeful that we get to do it this year, but let's not, we're not worrying about that one, one day at a time. <laughs> Yeah, because I, I, I'm, I'm really like my, my brain is just like ready to, to do it again and create more to, to showcase you guys in the biggest way possible. And on top of Tease, you also have branched out and created other shows on top of Tease, if you please, because not yeah, only are you, yeah. you're killing the private gig game, but then on top of that, you also have the Scarlet Hour that uh, runs at Black Rabbit Rose monthly. Do so you want to tell everybody how that started as well? Yeah, I mean, I think it was just, you know, when we were doing teas, we thought, man, like, we're, you know, the shows are doing so well, and we wanted to do, I guess, with burlesque, I really enjoy, which I know a lot of people after, I stay after the shows, and I talk to the fans and people who come to the show, what did you like? What could we do differently? Like, is there anything we could change? And the one thing that people constantly said was they wished that you know, maybe if they didn't buy the super expensive seats in the front, or maybe they decided to buy last minute and couldn't get anything, that they wish that they could be a little bit closer. They could see the whites of your eyes. <laughs> Girl, so, do they say I it like thought, that? Because I'd well, be like, sir. I could, yeah, I thought, well, I can go and find a smaller, more intimate space and give something that is completely different from the experience that you experience at Tease, if you please. You get that big, like, lights and the video screens and aerialists in the air and all this and then then you go all the way down to a room full of 50 people and then you fill the stage with a super classy band and then the dancers instead of dancing on the stage they come through secret entrances through the walls mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. like different the pictures move from the wall and a dancer will come out and the dancer will get right up on you like i will drink people's drinks i will take their glasses off their face <laughs> I'm always like, y'all need to stop like, drinking these people's uh, drinks. You, you, uh, maybe not with coronavirus for right now, but not for uh, and not now in the future. Before that, but uh, but yeah, so it was a very intimate experience that you get to see every little detail on people's costumes. You get to interact with your favorite performers from Tease If You Please. So that that's kind of why I did it because I wanted to give our audience a different, more intimate experience. And then on top of producing you're also a performer you travel you dance with ultra miami you're an ultra girl <laughs> i know mom has been doing that for a long time so i think i've run my course on that one but i definitely had <laughs> i definitely Not had my uh my fun times with that i really i do enjoy just um dancing and getting lost in the music sometimes a lot of stuff on that there's choreography and whatnot but i think my favorite part of doing stuff like that is to just get up there and and just let it loose Wild. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this because uh, I'm going to say two things. Uh, one, uh, you say how earlier that we help to create like teas and, and help uh, and we've given so much to you. But at the same time, it's like if anyone knows, uh, I'm from Miami and Donna was performing in a venue that was a Cuban ah, cabaret yes. called El Tucan and they had a amazing burlesque show also another performer that was a part of that was miss miranda that's a part of yeah. teasing please and donna was the one that actually like talked to the production and got me a gig at l2 can and y'all when i tell you that my family came every week like this shit's gonna suck and they walked out of there like changed and completely like immersed it was such a gift to me a gift to my family like that's something that like I just will take with me for the rest of my life. Like you that have was no such a fun time. And such to be able to experience time. it with you too was just honestly like I tell you a million times, that was one of the best. I'm from Miami. I spent twenty years there and that is still one of the best times I have ever had in Miami was the weekend yeah, that we got sharing that together. hotel room and everything. That was so fun. In South Beach <laughs> during the white party, that was Lisa yeah. Lata Lopez <laughs> hooking me the fuck up. Yes, I got dick. Oh, oh my as God. my Pia walks in. That. I remember uh, that. But on top of that, actually, I also want to go back because there was a question for you from one of the people in the audience. What was the name of your crew on America's Best Dance Crew? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> then we're going to explain that question. Y'all just going to have to. Go look it up. <laughs> yeah, y'all going to have to. I'll tell you. It was, it was called. Okay. And I, I'm just going to. I'm going to make a disclaimer that I did not approve of this name. <laughs> Don't ask me what it means because I have no idea why they picked it, but it was called Distorted X. Can someone please explain to me what that means? I came into the crew late, though. Like, this was a group of my friends that were already performing together. 
Okay. And I, I was working at the dance studio when the call came through from MTV. So I answered the phone and I, and then I immediately hung up and called them and was like, I know y'all already got a crew, but you're going to let me do it with you because I have some inside information. <laughs> yes. So, so me and another girl um, to kind of book in the, the five of them that were already there, we jumped in and then, yeah, we, we literally created the crew maybe six days before they showed up. It's amazing how some of that comes together when it's like meant to be though. Cause it's like, yeah. if you really do like, just like, if you have like a little bit of those signs and you just go at it, sometimes that shit looks like it's not gonna work and then it does and it's amazing. You have no idea what kind of, uh, inf oh look, uh, we have Distorted X, Laugh My Ass Off. I remember them from forever ago. Yep, <laughs> Donna Hood. <laughs> Yeah, it was a, it was, it was fun. It's so funny to go back and watch that footage though, because it's like dance has changed so much. So it's just watching how the style was that way at that time, and now looking at it, I'm like, ooh. <laughs> but it was. <laughs> what do you? A, from... It was a fun time, but we, you know, we were we were doing good at that point. That was our thing. It was the very yeah, like no. very kind of. Can I use the word cunty? <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Uh, there was very like that kind of style, like very sassy street jazz. Yeah. No, it's yeah. definitely changed dramatically. And it's like, as long as it doesn't start shifting to this TikTok dancing where everyone keeps it in a line like this and they don't like expand, I'm good. Oh, like, now I'm remembering what they're talking about with the ass slap. Because one of the girls did like this like B-boy move. And at the end of the dance, we had two guys in the group. And he just smacked her ass. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. And all of it's on film. So it's, it's there. So I'm, oh my God. I hope you guys don't find it. <laughs> Listen, all I'm saying is that a, a Google search for Donna Hood is oh, a God. good ass time. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. I love me some Googling some Donna Hood because you've done some amazing, of all the amazing projects, things you've produced, uh, you won awards like Miss uh, Viva Las Vegas. What has been in the burlesque scene, in your burlesque career? What has been the most like, and you know what? Let me not tell you how to say stuff. So. Uh, what has been the, the most amazing experience you've had? The most amazing experience? Um... Man, that's that's a hard tie, I think. Um, I'm going to go back to six year anniversary and say that one was, that was really special because it was, it just felt like this milestone that we had finally, because we had performed in that venue multiple times, but yeah. there was something really gratifying and special to see you guys on a completely different level with the big group of dancers behind you or like, a really cool prop or something like that. So that one was really good. Um, I guess the next one, if I can say that they're yeah, tied, because they are, they're such a close tie, would be getting to produce a show with Dita Von Tees, like that, or events, because we've done, we did Weekend of Glamour together, we did Von Follies together. Um, so I think getting to team up with her, doing stuff like that has been, that's, you, you look at it and go, okay, that, that happened. <laughs> Yeah, you look back on stuff sometimes. No, it's like, really cool because I mean, I think that she she's just done so much for burlesque and like putting it in the mainstream and all of that. So to this I say day, that yeah. was a pretty close second, and and getting to work with someone that I look up to. I think that that has been really great. I wait, wait, wait I was trying to do this. I was trying <laughs> to do this. It's so good. You know what time that means, y'all? Oh that God. means that it is time to play a game with Donna motherfucking Hood, y'all. Y'all ready for a game? Y'all ready for a game? You ready for a game, Donna? Yeah, yeah. This name of this game is amazing. <laughs> this is a <laughs> this is a Jeez Louise production, and I will say that this show is sponsored in part by my best friend Jeez oh Louise. Oh my god, is that a pillow? This is a pillow that she had given to me. Look at these, look at this hairy armpit. Oh my god, that is amazing. <laughs> She asked me what's my favorite picture of her, and then she sent me this. Oh my god, that's amazing. Is this not me as a host, though? Um, you guys are funny together. I love it. Uh, so, all right, so we're going to play Name That Stripper. Today, we're going to do a double edition. So you are going to get uh, some female-identified performers, and then our next guest will get some male-identified performers. But what's going to happen is that I'm going to put an image on the screen, and you are going to have 10 seconds to tell me which stripper that okay. is. 
All right. So are you ready, Donahue? I'm ready. Yeah. Okay. So this is going to be your first stripper. Name that stripper. Oh, eating. I know that picture. Eating. The, is that Coco Ono? Is that Coco Ono, y'all? Yes, it <laughs> is. Eating is the hint word, y'all. Coco Ono. <laughs> The sex I was like, she's got a prop, like eating. I was like, yeah, that's got to be her. I remember that picture <laughs> on Instagram. Now I'm glad, man, I'm glad I remembered that. The sex existential crisis of burlesque Coco Ono, who also is celebrating a birthday today. So y'all better go Aww, show yay. her some love, y'all. It, it's finally, she's finally 21. She's finally not illegally stripping anymore. I'm kidding. I'm so <laughs> teasing. <laughs> all right, y'all. All right. You ready for your next name, that stripper? Whoever just walked outside is like, what the fuck are y'all doing in there? Here's your next stripper. Name that stripper. Oh, wait. That. You can also get help from people in the audience. Is that Ruby? Ruby, we need a last Ruby name. Champagne? There are a lot of Rubies. There's a lot Ruby of Ruby. Champagne? Yes, that is Ruby <laughs> Champagne! <laughs> Yes, Ruby Champagne, the Mexican Spitfire of burlesque, y'all. Nice. Look how I edited her butt to be blocked right by my on hand. your face. <laughs> mm, I'm a mess. <laughs> yes, we got uh, a few more here. So uh, I'm trying to pick which one I want to do. Yeah, we're going to do this one. Okay, you ready for your next stripper? Sure. Let's see if this one crops out the titties. I hope it doesn't. Bam, yes. Oh, I know that one right off the bat. That's Media Noche. Hey, <laughs> Miss Exotic World, yeah. Media Noche. You know your stuff, Donna. Well, Lynn. Media is one of my favorites. She's stunning. My God. That's fine. Uh, I was going to literally put a picture of myself, but I was like, that's so <laughs> stupid. Uh, uh, all right. I think I have one more. No, I have two more. Okay, perfect. Um, this next one is going to be kind of different because there's going to be two people in it. Okay. All right. Are you ready? Okay, Here you go. Yeah. Name those strippers. Ah, that's Kitten and Lou. Man, I mean, if you what said anybody else. <laughs> who else is dressed like this with such epic. Yeah, and, and, the, and the two two peeps. Yeah, that's, oh, yeah. Man, I've never, you know what's funny is I don't know that picture, but that is an amazing photo. I did also, because sometimes I try to switch it. Like if I have a picture of an older burlesque uh, legend, I'll have it. If it's black and white, it'll be in color. So this one's actually like reverted. It's like Got usually it. the other way because I didn't want my face to block them. So it looks a little bit even, but it's epic as shit. Like it's they such are. A good photo. They are so epic. I love Kid and Lou. Shout yeah, out to Everything they do is so amazing and theatrical. I love it. That's, you know, I've been saying for the longest time and I'm putting it out there because, you know, we've been trying to do this and she's in the chat right now. Kitten and Lou, my biggest inspiration from them has been I've been trying to do a duet with Jezebel Thunder where I'm oh, a yeah. freak out. Oh, man. I, we done talked about that. No, 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 I know. We're getting into it. And I'm and and we and I am me and Jezebel are gonna do a Boy Scout Girl Scout routine, y'all, that is only this. only gonna be premiered at Tease if you please. So gotta we will definitely let y'all know when that is. All right. I hate to say it, but this is the last stripper that I'm gonna make you name today. All right. Okay. So I love you so much, but here we go. If you don't get this one right, I quit tease if you please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> here we go, y'all. Name that stripper. Oh man, I so funny the hair and the guard the thigh garters. That's Jeez Louise. <laughs> yes, it is Jeez Louise, the number one most burlesque performer in the most burlesque. Is that is that like fried chicken? That's Popeyes <laughs> with some pat PBRs and pizza. Now I want fried chicken. <laughs> First of all, look at there. There is Cheetos on top of the pizza. I don't oh, think Domino's God. does that. All of that looks so good. Look how my mom even is like writing G's because she's trying to help you out. <laughs> she's like. <laughs> Uh, Donna Hood, you are amazing. I put your Venmo and your Instagram down there. Instagram, oh, everyone, can, <laughs> everyone can find you. The Venmo gets blocked off because I'm an asshole. So I'm going to put it on after I say goodbye to you again. Uh, but thank you so much for joining us. I love you with all of my heart. And I cannot oh, wait. You. I'm so glad I got to see your face. Oh. I'm so glad you FaceTime me anytime you want. Now that I look normal again, I'm definitely up <laughs> to showing people my face again. <laughs> oh, I love you. Thank you so much for having me. No problem. Is there anything you want to tell the people before you go? Anything you want to promote? Do you want to uh, just tell them all to make sure that they are social distancing? I, I just, yeah, just stay safe and healthy and keep a lookout for when we get to be performing again. Because, man, that is going to be the day. 
Oh, the day yeah. that the show opens back up, people are going to get alcohol poisoning. <laughs> I'm so glad I don't drink because I'm like... I'm going to be like, let's go! I'll definitely so look smoke out, look less. Look out when we're back in action because, man, I am just feeling a creative burst and I'm just ready to get up out there. Same, same. I love you so much and I can't wait to not only hang out with you but create with you, girl. Uh, show some love to Donna Hood, everyone. Put some hearts up in there and make sure you Venmo her Donna Dash Hood. It's Ooh. very easy. We wish you with your government name. Say bye to the people, <laughs> my love. Bye. Love you guys. Thank you. Bye, Tina. Bye. I love you. Mm. Donna Hood, everybody, right there. You can check out the information. Venmo her. Throw her some money, y'all. I mean, look, we're all artists and we're all working. So we're here to entertain y'all with some free ass shit. The least you can do is throw us a dollar. Everybody throws a dollar in this chat. We'll get 13 bucks. You can buy some chicken nugget meals at the McDonald's. <laughs> Oh my gosh, y'all, that was so much fun. All right, before I bring out our next performer, the uh, performer, I'm talking like if I'm doing a show, y'all, but uh, it's just like in my nature. I wanna do a little sponsored by segment really quick. I wanna tell y'all who is sponsoring the show. Not only am I being sponsored in part by Jeez Louise who created my entire life, but you can also make sure to check out Aim to Wash Bidets. They hooked me up with the bidet, so my ass was clean as fuck, and I don't have to waste no toilet paper on that shit. Make sure you go and get one of those magical bidets, Aim to Wash, on Instagram. And also check out Ever After Creations with an extra S at the end. Uh, if you want to have some custom t-shirts, mugs, they got face masks, sweaters, tailgating shit, whatever you want to put on a t-shirt. Go check out my girl, Emily, and she is going to hook you up with some amazing custom wear, y'all. Whoo! All right, y'all. All right, y'all. Let me tell you real quick about uh, this next performer who is about to grace us with this motherfucking... You know what? Before I do, though, I'm going to play another game of which Cuban food am I? Let's get croquetas. No whammies, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Croquetas, croquetas. Hey! A medianoche. That's not that bad. All right. That was cute. We mentioned her twice today. All right, y'all. I am very excited to bring out our next guest who comes to us from New York by way of Miami right now. He is a boy less star of epic proportions. Look at this fine ass man, y'all. Give it up for Mr. Boy. You know, what's happening? I almost did it right this time. Look at that. Look at that epic title card for you. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? How are you? You're coming to us live from Miami, right? Yeah, I'm in South Beach. Ooh, bringing the heat, Will Smith. Just trying, trying. Oh my God, Donna Hood is amazing. I want to get alcohol poisoning with her and then be a part of Distorted X. Listen, I will <laughs> absolutely, first of all, not just <laughs> I would love for you to be in tease. That would be such a fucking mind blow. <gasps> that would be fun. You would be so epic here. You know you'd kill that, this L.A. game. Well, hello, hello. Welcome to the Tito Bonito Show. Thank you for having me. I love this. Are you kidding? You know I have to have you because, of course, I've told you a million times because I love telling the people that inspire me and uh, that motivate me how much they do. But you are absolutely one of the first male burlesque performers that I ever saw when I first heard that men can even do this shit as men. It and happens. And you were... <laughs> You weren't even a part, and that makes it sound like you're so much older because I'm old as fuck, but you only started like maybe a year before I did, which is crazy. You started I don't know around when, when was that? You started around what, 2009? Uh, a little before that, but that was when I was really starting to like work, work. So how did you, because I know how you got your name, and yeah. I know that you put it in a bunch of fucking interviews and shit, but I love that Donna was also a teacher for small kids as well. You want to tell the people yeah. how you got into burlesque, how you got your name, what kind of motivated you to get into an art form that was such a rare, like, especially 10 years ago, it was even more rare than it is now. What kind of motivated you? Well, um, the story real quick about how I got my name was um, while I was in college, I was getting a degree in education and art education, and I was teaching pre-K through five. Um, and one of the kids, actually a second grade student, actually called me, my last name is Gorsuch. So instead of calling me Mr. Gorsuch, they accidentally called me Mr. Gorgeous. And it kind of just stuck. It was like all of a sudden, yeah, it was like, it was a joke in the classroom. Then like literally all of the teachers and the principal and everyone was just like, oh, hey, Mr. Gorgeous, have a good weekend. And I just kept it, you know? 
I would that absolutely, was... I would absolutely call. You. I bet you their parents were saying that they were like, "Ooh, girl, don't talk to Bob, Mister Gorgeous, in front of the kid." And then he said it to you. Oh my god! I, I know. bet. I know. So what got you into burlesque? Because you are part of the New York scene, which I on obviously the boy less scene is very like i feel like in patches and new york is one of the like greatest cities to have some of the best male burlesque performers so what kind of motivated you got you started there yeah um well so i actually after graduating school i went to vermont and was performing and training in a circus school for two years and during that time one of the guys i was working with um kevin beverly uh we did an acrobatic like hand-to-hand -hand act and um we got a call from Mac Cosmetics to be a part of their um, like benefit show that they were throwing. Uh, Reedem and Weep was putting it together, and she said, "Can you guys come down? We need something that's like, you know, burlesque oriented, but like we wanted an acrobatic group. So we did this um, bull and matador act, uh, mm -hmm. where I was the bull and he was the matador, and we did all kinds of mostly like circus acrobatics in the show. And uh, of course, like we did some bit of like stripping, some burlesque stuff, and uh, that night." Tigger was working as well. And Tigger came up to me and was like, oh my gosh, burlesque this and burlesque that. And I was like, I have no, I don't even know what you're talking about, like what that is. And yeah. um, so I finally got the scoop on it. And then his big piece of advice was, you need to take more clothes off. <laughs> so I was like, this is, this is fun, you know? We love the king of boy less telling you to take as much clothing off. And that, what a fucking amazing person to be like introducing that to you as well. It was literally world famous Bob was hosting the night. I think Murray Hill was there. Dirty was probably there. It was, I mean, that I think was back in maybe 2007. Wow. So it was a long time ago, but that was when I just started figuring out like, oh, what burlesque is, what the rules were, because I, um, you know, I, I don't have an ounce of danceability in my body. So I was just unsure that that was something I could even do until I kind of found a little bit of a different language a little gimmick to make it all work but it was a great great show yeah that is the magic of burlesque because it's like yeah you do say you can't dance but you are definitely one of the most entertaining people who it's it's weird because you can have musicality and not be able to dance and that's kind of like hard to explain to people because they kind of are the same thing yeah no i i agree i agree it's um I think that it's also about moving with intention and that doesn't have to be necessarily in a dance move or a five, six, seven, eight. It's just everything that you do as far as where you're looking, like what your hand's doing, what your body's doing. It's a, this is a visual uh, language. So it's, although I can't really even point my toe and I have probably a sickle point, it's like, I don't care. You know, it's like a, that's not, that's not part of my vocabulary, which, you know, of of how many acts would you say do you have that are like you would put out there and like you know like if you had a full-fledged motherfucking website with all your acts because yeah. i have a top five but it always makes me interested to see what acts haven't been put on the internet what's like your favorite act of yours because the last interview i saw where they asked you that you just gave them the proper answer where you were talking about the most recent act that you did yeah um, you know, it's, it's funny for me, the things that um, I think are like almost the most successful in my book are where I'm like, the, the costume and the concept is always like starts with, you don't be really dumb. <laughs> like, yeah, it would be so stupid to do this. You know, like, I, I think that there's something about breaking down the barrier of uh, sexuality and sometimes people feeling uncomfortable at times to see a male bodied performer or even a female body performer for that matter, um, or any bodied performer, you know, not to title anything, but um, I just love humor. I think that it's such a great way to like approach um, the exchange. So for me, it's like, I don't know what acts I would put on there, but they're probably some of the most ridiculous ones, like my hermit crab act, which is just like, it's a fun visual there is nothing uh, dynamic about it, but it always gets people laughing. I don't know how you can't say any of your acts are not dynamic, though. Well, there. Thank you. I mean, you're, running, act, you're running around as a as a as a eight foot tall crab. That's pretty. Yeah. Dumb. But you know what's funny is that that act I feel kind of guilty because it's almost more for me than for them because it's like a therapy session. Um, I am, I grew up in Baltimore, but I am anaphylactic allergic to seafood. 
like shellfish. I think so, I remember you saying that. Now. <laughs> so I was like, every time I put that crab outfit on, it's it's kind of like therapy in a way. <laughs> Listen, you, me as a Boy Scout, I was uh, manhandled by people, so it's very therapeutic for me <laughs> and take off my clothes at my own will as a Boy Scout. Right. <laughs> My mom's in the chat. Let me stop acting like I'm fucking lying about this shit. Uh, oh my God. Your ice cream act, because your ice cream act is like, you, I don't want to use this word, but it's like, you have this simplicity that's super complicated. And it's like, I think when people, like when I first watched you, I remember, and this is so weird to say, but it's like, I remember the first thing that I noticed when I watched you was the fact that you didn't have makeup on, which I get stage makeup you have, but like prominent that it didn't change what you look like. And that yeah. was something that, like, I remember being, like, trying so many different ways to try to be a drag performer, try to do different shit that when Jeezy taught me boy less and just got, kind of gave me a list of people to look at. I remember yeah. you, because even, like, Mod Carousel, boy less T.O. was also on that scene, but we just are men representing yeah. ourselves as men on stage. And I think, especially in a field that's so predominantly female, it's... Um, it's really not only magical to see the longevity that you've had in it, but it's also like, you are really good as a performer. I also love what I call the talking to the audience while you're performing part of when <laughs> Cause you and Jeezy do that shit like an art where you're just like, like when that bird takes a shit on you, that bird takes a shit on everyone. Not to spoil or alert it. No, you're not spoiling, but I appreciate that I means so much because for me, that's like, that's been part of uh, the fun for me of live performing, which is why it's a little challenging right now is because I just want to, you know, I want to like during a thing, scream out at someone and hear a scream back, which we all do. You know, that's all part of the fun. I forgot even what you said in Vienna when you were doing uh, the whip act. And I don't know, cause you, you always like every act is different. You're very good with audience participation, which is very oh, hard you. as a performer to be able to not only improv, but then to improv with someone who, can have all levels of anxiety that you're bringing them on stage and shit like that. My mom is in the comments trying to figure out how to Google all of your acts. Don't worry, girl, I'll send you a list. I will send you a YouTube list of all oh, of your acts. I love that, I love that. I'm pretty sure she's seen you at Burlesque Hall of Fame, but I just don't know which act. Uh, he's the only one that's like 10 foot tall, mom. It's going to be the bird when there are no liquids on the stage. Ooh. <laughs> um, you also won incredible all the like high titles that you can as a male burlesque performer you won mr what is the proper title best boy less it's uh best boy less is the proper title but then they, people always try to like associate a um king of this or this or that and i just that's always i'm kind of like i don't i don't really to be honest I and mean, this is going to sound terrible because i'm not not grateful for it it's right. a wonderful achievement in my career the thing that i really enjoyed though was the year prior i won most comedic and that for me which i believe you have also won. Oh, yeah, no, you told me I was going to win the year that I won most comedic. So. Yes. But I feel like for me, that's actually, um, that, that for me more is like, oh, people really think it's funny. I'll take that award. And, it's, <laughs> and, and you're trying to be funny. It's not like you're accidentally funny and then it's just like jarring and like traumatic. Like you were trying, you are comedic. Like, Thank you. Yeah, it's funny because even though I don't like do five, six, seven, eight dance routines, da, 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 all of the like walking back and forth and waving and turning and all that is all fairly choreographed. I mean, you know that we all know that to a degree. It's like that there's those like funny moments that you want to uh, have appear very haphazard. Um, and sometimes during them, I think, God, I hope people realize I actually know what I'm doing. <laughs> but you know, yeah, but that, that's the kind of the part of whatever you put on stage. It's like people are going to get it. They're not going to get it. But it's like the majority of people get it. The majority of people it like I have. I think it's like the fact that I've always just loved you as a performer, knowing that you I wouldn't perform the same as you, knowing that you kind of look like my brother, actually, like my <laughs> actual brother. I love it. And my brother's brother that. never. I beg my brother to perform all the time because my brother is one of the funniest people in the world. And he just will be, he always says he'll be like the frog from WB where he'll say yeah. shit. And then when people will see him, he'll just be like ribbit. I'm like, that's oh my God. God. <laughs> but you're like, if I, if my brother was me, that's what Mr. Gorgeous is. Like a hundred percent instead of the Marine police officer that he is. I um, love that. But also my introduction to you as well, besides like actually meeting you is you got me 
which I'm so grateful to this day, one of my favorite gigs of all time, the couples cruise, the swingers cruise. Oh yeah, with Trixie. California with Trixie Minx. And that was by far my biggest dream in burlesque. I remember being like, I can quit. I can literally quit. <laughs> and, I, and you got me this gig and I hadn't even met you yet. Well, so I can tell you though. I think that I, this is the thing. I'll say this first of all is like I didn't get you anything. All of your hard work and how hilarious and fucking brilliant you are got it for you. But when it was like we need someone, uh, you were you were of course in my mind someone that I was just like I've always really admired your um, hard work and your clever. You know, you you just go there. I, I just love it so much. So I was really happy that I could pass that one along to you, but. Um, no, that was, it was a fun gig. gig. No, and I actually even met you the week right after I did the gig. So I remember the yeah. first time I met you, I was just like, you're the greatest person in the whole world. <laughs> like, <laughs> still so grateful for that because it's honestly like, besides El Toucan, that cruise gig was like the most epic shit that I've ever been on in my entire That's life. So and I love cruises. Well, like, I love you know cruises. You know what's funny when uh, Donna Hood and you were talking about El Tucan? That's I've actually worked at worked at El Tucan before. Also, that's that's right. You worked with uh, what was the Folly show that they had? We it was um, with Suzanne Barch. We came down and it was Joey Arias, uh, Amanda Lepore, Dirty, <laughs> myself, Julie Atlas Muse. Really, really. I mean, a ton of other people, but super, super fun. God, I would have begged to be in that. I already begged just to be in that fucking show in, to begin with, but to be with all of y'all would have just been like an experience I don't even know if my body was ready for back then. It was cray. <laughs> hey, Papo, Papo, you want to play a game? Okay, oh my God, I'm terrible at games, but I want to do it. Let's do it. Listen, this game is so much fun because not only do we get to play a game, but we also get to promote our friends. Okay, I like that. Uh, so we're going to play Name That Stripper, but with you, I'm going to have a little bit of fun with it. You're going to get all okay. male identified performers. Okay. And then one of them is going to be a little switch. It won't okay. be. If I, don't, if I don't know them, it's because I'm bad at games, not because I don't know them. It's, also, these are pictures, so it's fucked up. But I will say this, because we're not here to try to make y'all look stupid. We just want to promote your shits, and we're going to promote your costume designing as well. So oh, I, just, cool. I want to play this shit before uh, this thing kicks us off and then we can go back to it. But yeah, yeah. here we go. You're going to ready okay. to aim that stripper? Yeah, I hope. <laughs> Listen, I, you're going to be fine. Plus, this is the other thing that I was going to say. You can have help from the audience. So don't, okay. everyone in the audience, get your thumbs on the fucking thing. If you know these people before him, type it in, help your boy out. All right, here's your first stripper. <laughs> name that stripper. That is, oh my God. I know from the jacket and the hat. Anyone? You Hold mentioned on. him earlier, I will say. Is it Tigger? Bam, 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 Tigger, T-I double go -er. Do you know what I love is that if it were a little less blurry, seeing the, um, the ab peck line shaved in and penciled in is just such an iconic moment. I love it. <laughs> That's why I mosaic the fuck out of that because I was like, I want to make it a little hard, but I know you know this. Like I know you'll no, know. I, I know you'll know. Some people. Uh, here we're gonna do a fun one with the next two. So this one is this next performer. You're gonna have to tell me who it is, and then the following one is gonna be connected to them. All right. Okay. So this is obviously Tigger, the very first best boylesque winner of the Burlesque Hall of Fame, King of Boylesque. If y'all don't know, y'all better fucking Google and don't look up the Winnie the Pooh character. Right. <laughs> Here you go. Here's your second. Name that stripper, baby. Waxy Moon. Hey! You didn't even have to question that, huh? No. With you that photo, that. that's an iconic photo. And, and with that iconic photo, our next performer that we're going to have to name is wearing that shirt. So who the fuck is this asshole? Oh, Trojan Original. <sighs> hey, I'm doing okay. Listen, doing okay. You got a hundred out of a hundred. Thanks. Trojan original, both waxy, wearing a waxy shirt, both from Seattle. I love it. Then icons in the boy less scenes. Uh, I also all of these are inspirations to me as well because I think I don't think any of these people I wasn't researching when I first learned about boy less. All right, here's your right. fourth one. Here we go. Okay. Let's see four for four. Name that stripper. Is it? James and the Giant Pasty? 
Listen, no, no one's helping you with yes, this, it is. literally. No I've never even seen that photo. That's a because great photo. We got them new photos. We got them exclusives, them rares, them rarities. Oh I was my gonna God. You, I was going to so, give you the kid in the new one, but that, I felt like that was cheating. That's, so, like, that's like family. That's brother and sister there. That's like if I posted a photo of you. But I am going to post another <laughs> photo of boy less icon. And okay. Oh, Jenna Dore. Yeah. So yeah, I knew that face was going to get covered, but you fucking... Okay. I can smell the masculinity from here. Listen, I can smell the sarcasm. <laughs> not masculinity. Uh, this next one is not going to be mosaic out. What I'm going to do okay. is something completely different. I'm going to show you a picture of them as a young kid. And you're oh going to... Oh my God, this is so fun. You're going to have to tell me who this is, all right? Okay. So who, which male burlesque icon is this young man? Will he grow up to be? Oh my God. God, he's cute. I would have had such a, an 80s crush on this fucking asshole. Hold on. I'm trying to look in the eyes. The eyes is a hint. Tito? No, it's not me. I was not. No, a... it's not you. I'm, I'm thinking like. T... I'm God, letting I couldn't you, look. I'm letting you go hint. longer so that. Because this one's good. Oh my God, that cute little face. Who would. <laughs> Jezebel, who do you think this is, girl? Help him out. Jezebel, help me now, quick. Oh my god. Do you want a hint? Me, yeah, I would love a hint. Uh, he works closely with the last performer we just saw. Oh god. Give me my, give, hold on, Jezebel. Shout out, girl. You got a minute and 50 seconds before they cut us off, and I'm gonna just do it again. You give up? Is that? That's not. What is one of three? Hold on. Is that Bazooka Joe? Yes, it is. Are you kidding me? That is young Bazooka Joe, y'all. That does oh not. I mean, I maybe it's because he's not wearing a white towel. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love it. You literally killed the game. That was fucking perfect. You got every single one of those strippers right. Congratulations. Uh, thanks for the hints. Listen, they were not bad hints. Uh, before we go, though, I do want to shout out, you are an amazing costume, de costume designer, and you have your own Instagram for all of your creations. You make ha most, most, if not all, of the shit that you wear. Oh, yeah, I make everything I wear, yeah. So check out gorgeous underscore by underscore gorgeous. And I will make you, sure, you know. I'll make sure to pop that in uh, in the post for this. But also remember that this is going to be on forever on IGTV. So you can oh, always go cool. back. And the comments will be disappearing when it's posted on IGTV. So you can watch the shit without having everyone cover your face. <laughs> uh, okay. I love you so much. I cannot wait to be able to be in the same room as you again. Let me know when that's a possibility. Yes, I know. I love you too. And thank you for doing this and working so hard to keep like great, fun, uh, uplifting content rolling. I know it's not easy, but you're killing it. Trying. Look, I got 15 seconds. Say hi to your beautiful partner. Enjoy my hometown. I'm going to be there soon. So let yes, me know if you want to We're uh, here. We'll Come on down. I'm down. I love you so much. Thank you for joining yeah. us. Bye. Thank you. Bye.